rivers went for fishing. Yes, yes, lovely people. Welcome back to Carp's R Mark 1-0 and part two of the Arkham Fish Endeavour. Hope you all enjoyed the adventure of part one where we learned the basics of fly fishing, explored and took a plunge in the Blue Lagoon, fished the mountain rivers of Austria and took part in a restocking program and fished the most amazing lake up at 1800 metres. Now, although part two is just beginning, the Arkham Fish Endeavour is actually coming to an end. Friday marked the fifth and final day of the programme and in true Invictus style we were to head out on an All Nations fishing match. The Netherlands versus Canada versus France versus the UK-Denmark collaboration. Now the idea was to go out and fish as a team and catch a combined total but Rick had also set us a challenge to go out on our own solo and catch our own fish. We headed out early up into the mountains there was still that chilly morning feeling down on the riverbed. It felt like things just weren't quite awake yet. And to be honest, neither was I. I decided to switch up my fly for something with a bit more colour in the hope that it might be a bit more eye-catching and nick me a bite. But still, nothing wanted to take it. I continued on up the river where things started to turn into a bit of a nightmare. I kept getting my fly snagged on bits of debris in, in between the rocks and it felt like I was back on day one. I was also starting to think I might be letting the team down. Eventually the sun started to tip over the ridge of the mountain and as it beat down and shimmered off the water, I could feel things warming up a bit. There was a totally different feel to the one earlier on in the morning. And as things started to wake up, so did the small brown trout.
we moved on further up the river, it was becoming noticeably shallower. The sheer amount of soils were bold as it was increasing. But this meant I could look for the deep slack pools of water when the fish were to hold up. Another one, Team Denmark, England. Nice little job. I ended up wandering the river getting lost in my own little world and completely lost track of time. Then I started to receive messages saying it was soon time for lunch, which meant that would be the end of the match. And with five fish in the bag, I thought I'd head over to see how Paul was getting on. I managed to pick up a few followers along the way. That has to be one of the most relaxing mornings fishing I've ever had. Although there was a lot of moving and walking around, mentally it was so relaxing. Just me, by myself, wandering up the river, caught up in the moment. Worried about nothing but looking for spots and catching fish. All the stresses and time became irrelevant. Every now and again I'd look up and see the sheer size and beauty of the environment that I'm standing in. But there was a match at hand, and with five fish in the bag, I decided to go and see how Paul was getting on. Although the river had other ideas.
Well, I'll come up this way, mate. It's a bit rough there. It's a bit rough there. We made our way down the river, it was becoming noticeably rougher, and we soon found out why. We ended up coming to the top of a waterfall, which didn't seem to want to let us pass. We continued to fish the pools around the top of the waterfall, but eventually we had to turn back. The river wasn't going to let us go on without breaking a limb or taking a trip downstream. It's in two in there, the way under that big rock. There we go. It's a bit rougher. You don't want to trip there because I think it's steeper. Yeah, yeah. It's a shame we couldn't get past that waterfall because down on the other side it looked really good for fishing. But I'll remember that for next time I'm out in Austria. We could have got out on the bank and walked further down the river, but we didn't have time. We'd received a message it was time for lunch, which marked the end of the match. We all met up at this little restaurant in the middle of nowhere that sat at the foot of the mountain next to the river. And it doesn't get much more Austrian than this. Well, after an amazing and final day of fishing, that was the perfect little spot for us to come together and eat lunch. It was nice to hear some authentic yodeling as well from Paul. But let's get down to business. There was a match at hand. Now, I'm told most of the veterans that day struggled to catch fish, which makes the competition easier for me and Paul. I'm also told that Roger and Monique both caught one fish each for the Netherlands, but I've struggled to find one picture of these fish. And you know what we say in this game, no picture, no fish. Now Paul claims he caught seven fish, and with my five that gave us a team total of 12. But again, I've not got one picture of these fish. Paul, you need to get your pictures in the comments below or on the socials, mate, because it looks like I'm carrying the team. But either way, whether it was five or 12, Team UK Denmark was in the clear lead. 
Now, there's all this talk of it's Invictus, we're all winners. But I wasn't listening to that nonsense. It was Team UK Denmark for the win, and we was going to take it and relish in the glory. We headed back to the accommodation for tier medals. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rene, yeah, you, you also did an awesome job, you, you helped there, you know, I, I asked you and you said directly, all right. No doubt. I, yeah, no doubt. You know, you took a week off also from work and everything and it's awesome. So, thank you. And, uh, you know, I'm not, not that good in, uh, in talking, but, you know, I had an awesome day, you know, there was a lot of pressure on me and um, but uh, you, you all did us awesome. everybody cut fish and uh, yeah you know thank, what the first day you, you could see how nervous you was and how you was running around and how frantic you was and as the week's gone on you just uh, yeah. smiled and chilled yeah. and yeah. Definitely, definitely. you could see how you've gone through the week that yeah. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, there was a competition today. Today it was. Were they? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't yes. know. So, so because it's the the, the Invictus uh, Games Foundation, so we Ooh. today we had a, a, a little game, and it was quite uh, difficult for the team. But we uh, we had one team that was uh, the team of Rene. So. Uh, we have a waiting for the pictures, but yes, we have a little prize for you. So come on, both. <laughs> so uh, yeah, the, this, uh, you you managed to catch uh, ten fishes uh, as the first team. We have a little prize. Uh, uh, we have a you know if you win, you win some. So we have a prize for you. My daughter will give it to you. Yes. Thank you. And that's thank you. Yes. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Uh, in the thoughts of the Invictus Games, we are all winners. So. We all have a little surprise for everybody. Yes? Uh, oh, no. Yes? Thank you. Oh, Oh, yeah. Roger. Uh, Roger, you have two. You have two. Oh, you have two. Oh, okay. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So. Yes. So. Thank you, guys. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, it was an uh, awesome week. Thanks for that. Definitely. Well, it all got a little bit emotional there at the end. But that's what these Invictus endeavours are about and the impacts that they can have. It's great to go out to a nice country and take part in the activity. But it's about getting veterans out socialising again and meeting nice like-minded people. It's about the camaraderie, the memories, the friendships and bonds created. That's what it's all about. And if you're wondering what the prize was, Rick could give us an all a return ticket to go back out to Austria. But with that, the Icon Fish endeavour had come to an end. Rick just had one last treat in store. We wanted to take us out for a meal before we all departed back to our home nations. Now on day one, he told us about the XL schnitzel and how if you couldn't finish it, you wasn't a man. So obviously we went for the one with about two pound of cheese on top. And I'm not joking, this thing was ridiculous. It even made the Great Dane look small. Now the veterans were due to depart back to their home nations at various times over the weekend. We woke up on Saturday morning having already said goodbye to Francois and Marjorie as they headed back to France on a late night flight. The rest of us decided we were going to take a day trip. 
We took the cable carts up to 3,250 metres to visit the Hintertux Ice Glacier. Yeah. Here comes the wind. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah. <laughs> I can look up and over. So okay. I remember this scene from the uh, eagle's nest. Where oh, Clint, Clint with Clint That's a great yeah. movie. Clint Eastwood is crawling on top of this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was thinking a bond. James Bond. Yeah. James Bond. Oh, this kid. Yeah. Like these ridiculous actions. Will people jump out and ask them if they yeah, can put them on the hole? So you can get on the floor. Slow down. Yeah. So you, we don't have to wait for you to go down another again. Up <laughs> and around and there he goes. <laughs> Stay there, maybe they all went up there. What another beautiful spot that was. I'm glad that we all took the time to go and see that before we left. It was nice to just see everybody having fun, enjoying themselves and laughing. But Sunday morning came. The Dutch had gone back to the Netherlands. The Canadians had gone back to Canada. There was just me and Paul left. We didn't have a flight until the evening. What else was we to do? We grabbed the rods and we got Rick to take us out on the river for one last time.
We will go to a different spot. Yep.
They're lying at the end of the gravel. No, further. And out and in, to the right. Yes. Just leave it. There it's coming. He's coming. He's coming. Uh, and he goes down. Yeah, nice. No. Yes. Oh. Oh. Yep. Beautiful Steve. video. Beautiful fish. Oh, this color. Yeah, 
take a picture like you did like... What a perfect way to end my first ever fly fishing adventure. We continued to catch loads of fish into the early afternoon as the sun beat down over the mountain. And as we left the riverbed that day, I was so glad that we decided to take this one last final trip out. I felt like we'd just taken part in something special where bonds had been strengthened and a session that we will all take away and remember forever. Now me and Paul had spent most of the week fishing with the other guides, so it was great to get out with Rick and get some one-on-one -on -one time before we left. He's a very knowledgeable guy when it comes to fly fishing and he's great to learn from. We'd had a great laugh and we caught loads of fish. And he was able to instill in me the things that I'd learned throughout the week as well as giving me plenty to go home and work on. But we was running out of time. We had just enough time to get back to the accommodation, sink a hot dog and get ourselves off to the airport. And as the last two veterans left Austria, that marked the end of the Arkham Fish Endeavour. And as we took off over the snow-capped mountains of Innsbruck, a part of me felt a little sad, although in my head I was already planning the return trip. Because although my time in Austria had come to an end, I think my fly fishing journey is just beginning. Now the Icon Fish Endeavour really was one of the most amazing experiences of my life. Lots of fish, food and adventure in the most stunning country, meeting some of the most amazing people and new friends. And for this experience I have a lot of people to thank. Firstly, the Invictus Games Foundation, hosting another great Invictus Endeavour. Now luckily I took part in the Invictus Games 2020 and since then my life changed. It's opened so many doors and opportunities for me and I urge any WIS veterans to get in touch with the Invictus Games Foundation whether you've took part in the games or not. They can help change your life too. Secondly, I want to thank all of the guides for their time and efforts in making this journey amazing. Rene, Martin, Jacob, Chris Sue, Ali, you all did a great job and it meant so much to all of us and we thank you for this experience. Thirdly, I want to thank all of the participants that came from around the globe to take part in the Arkham Fish Endeavour. I don't think Rick could have picked a greater bunch of people and it really was a pleasure to share this experience and meet you all. Now, to the man himself, Rick Sybern. Rick put everything into creating this endeavour and you could see that it meant so much to him. And to be honest, I don't think he could have done a better job or picked a better group of people. He did an absolutely amazing job. It meant so much to all of us. And Rick, from the bottom of our hearts, we thank you all for this experience. Now, there's one person that I can't go without a mention. Rick's wife, Caroline. Caroline is such an amazing lady. She took us in and made us feel welcome. Fed us and made sure we was taken care of. And we all know she's the one steering the ship. So a massive thank you to Caroline from everyone on the Arkham Fisher Endeavour. You really are great people, Rick and Caroline. If there's anybody out there looking for a fishing guide or a skiing guide out in Austria, be sure to check out at Zumschneider Finkenberg. Lovely people, you'll be well looked after, and Rick knows all the locals and best fishing spots. But sadly, that's the end of the Arkham Fisher Endeavour. Now if some of you are regular viewers of the Mark 1-0 channel, you may have realised this is the first video I've done without Jelly and Baines. Boy did I know about it. I think Baines is still being off with me now. But because of that, we're going back to Austria, August this year, and I'm taking the boys with me. And if you don't want to miss that, be sure to hit that like, subscribe and notification button. But for now, that's all we've got time for. Thank you all for joining us on this special episode of the Arkham Fish Endeavour. And for now, it's Mark 1-0 out.